friends, I am delighted to be with you all. Forgive me for not being able to speak in Canada. You know, the first thing that strikes anyone in this hall is Lok Sattva Party, government by the people. Let us look at what's happening in Karnataka today. A wonderful state's potential has been completely wasted over the past seven years, not merely over the past five years, but I would say over the past 10, 12 years. The BJP, which started off with Operation Lotus today, is an object of ridicule for the damage it has done to the state of Karnataka and to itself. I don't have to recount the monumental failure in governance and in terms of corruption. The Congress Party has nothing to offer because earlier the Congress Party gave even, if it's possible, even worse misgovernance in this state. And today there is neither unity nor a sense of purpose except the hope that BJP is discredited and therefore will come to power this time around. Now it's our chance to hit the jackpot. The JD's only purpose is to get all the people who are not given seats by these two parties and hopefully to get a few seats and then leverage them for private gain. Their families and their parties private gain. And in Europe, KJP's only purpose is because he is burned or he is not respected adequately in BJP to do as much damage to BJP as possible and to see if we can emerge as another Janakadal in this state. In all of this, where are the people? Yes, because the people are voting, you can call it, it is a government of the people. But it certainly is not government by the people. The reason why Lok Sattva has to come forward in Karnataka under wonderful leadership and with exceptional candidates is that somebody has to now work to transform politics and make it a government by the people. Look at the candidates that we have seen. It's so refreshing. I must really congratulate Dr. Ashwin Mahesh and his colleagues for doing a great job. <laughs> for, for more than a decade, we've been talking about a reservation for women and constituencies. Without a formal reservation, Lok Sattva Party had the temerity and the integrity both to really invite women and put up not merely token candidates, but outstanding candidates like Dr. Minakshi, Sansala, and many others. Women up and down in numbers. If you see the average age, those of us who are past 50 are in a hopeless minority in the presence of these candidates. It's a youthful, it's a youthful team. The average age, I suspect, is no more than 35 or so. Slightly more, maybe. The youth actually are coming in large numbers. If you look at the antecedents of the candidates, if you look at a very experienced candidate who was an earlier ISRO officer to a doctorate and an eminent scientist and public policy advocate and thinker, to a professional doctor and advocate for public causes including garbage disposal and improvement of Bangalore city to a professor in management institution. To, no, these are people who are the cream of society. They are people who are successful. These are not the dregs of humanity who have come to politics as a last resort to make money out of politics. These are people who are successful in their professional lives and their personal lives who are coming at great personal risk without expecting anything in personal terms in return except the public good. This is the kind of India we must build in the future. Lok Sattva is in the fray, not merely to be in competition with them, but to actually transform the nature of politics and the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Look at the candidates of Lok Sattva party in Bangalore City. Bangalore City. Look at the kind of people that are now willing to come forward. Almost every one of them is new to politics. Each one of them is the first time contestant for a legislative assembly at Lok Sabha seat in this state and this country. This is the kind of people that we need if India is to be transformed. 
and I'm genuinely proud about that. And the work that all the candidates have taken today is a testament to the faith in the people of this country, faith in the democratic process that we will not pervert democracy. We will not buy the vote. We will not distribute liquor or all kinds of goodies to get the vote. We will not treat people like mendicants. And we will not use divisive impulses of caste, region, religion and other things in order to get the vote and make one group hate the other group and make hatred the basis for election. And that's not enough. That's good. That's not enough. And therefore there's an agenda. Look at what other parties are saying. Is any party talking about the issues plaguing the people of Karnataka, the state of Karnataka and offering an alternative? Whether it is the power sector or water, or urban management, Bangalore city's water supply, or local governments or corruption, or education and opportunity for everybody. And no issue do they have any agenda worth seeing. Except blaming each other, abusing each other, and giving money to the people, the voters. They have absolutely no purpose. The only purpose is self-aggrandizement. Politics as business. And to make money in politics. I am proud of the Karnataka chapter of Lok Sattva Party for coming up with a wonderful agenda. Practical, sensible, commonsensical, and very genuine. Based on the agenda, on the beliefs, and the philosophy of Lok Sattva Party, and necessary for the country and the state of Karnataka. I do not think any political party in this election in Karnataka has come up with a printed statement of this kind. Very clear, very practical, very genuine. And these are all parties with enormous assets. I think their expenditure, despite the election commission suffers, is going to run into hundreds of crores in this election if you put all the constituencies together. But there's no purpose except private gain, except personal aggrandizement, and therefore there's no agenda. The only agenda is we want power. What for? To make money. Because why should you be in power is not a question asked of them. They don't have to answer. But Dr. Sattva answers this question. Why do you want power? Is it because Dr. Rashun Mahesh or Dr. Meenakshi Bharat or Shantala or other candidates, they want to make money? Or is it because there is a purpose in seeking power? Is power a means or is it an end? Thanks to the misdeeds and failings of these political parties over the years, there is an enormously important agenda for Karnataka. And that's what all these candidates in Bangalore City and the rest of Karnataka where Lok Sattva is interesting, they stand for this agenda of the future. Opportunity is the watchword. The reason why our democracy is in doldrums is because the fruits of economic growth are not reaching all. Unless every single child in the state of Karnataka and in India Irrespective of the circumstances of birth, which are the caste, what are the economic status, rich or poor, urban or rural, educated and illiterate family. Unless every child has an opportunity, unless every child has a future, unless every child can fulfill her true potential, there is no meaning of politics. This morning, as I landed in the Bangalore airport, I went to the coffee day there, I saw those young people without any sense of hope. Some years ago, many of these young people working in this service sector, though their salaries were little, they were optimistic. There was a smile on their lips. There was a cheer on their face. But today, increasingly, thanks to the misgovernance of our states and our country, many of the young people don't have a sense of the future. I asked this young lady who represents a newspaper who's interning, who's now an undergraduation. I asked her, what does she think of politics? She said, all these parties, all that they do is abuse each other. We don't know really what they stand for. They don't stand for anything. And that's why I started off with what they're saying. It's time that we put the citizen, the opportunity for the young people, as the central issue of the agenda of politics of this country. Not only for Lok Sattva Party, but for the country. Look at education today. In Karnataka, in Andhra Pradesh, in Tamil Nadu, in Maharashtra, in Gujarat, in every state of this country, Education stinks. Almost 100% of the children are put to school when they reach the school going age. That is not the problem. But what are they getting out of education? Not even 20% of the kids are learning anything worthwhile. 
If they are in 5th grade or ninth grade or 10th grade, only 15 to 20 percent of the children are learning something equivalent to that grade or one grade below. 80 percent are nearly going to school without getting anything in return. And we want to end poverty. We want to give jobs. We want to ensure economic growth. We want a prosperous society. We want a harmonious society with 80 percent of the kids not getting any chance to fulfill their potential. This is the heart of the challenge of India. If you want to build India of the future, not India of the past, then we have to address this opportunity issue, education issue, jobs and livelihoods issue. Every child must have a chance to be able to compete with an MLA's brother, with a collector's son, with a minister's daughter, if she works hard. She must have the opportunity to be able to compete. And looks at the party's primary goal is to create such a society. A society where even the present is somewhat unhappy, even the present does not really give us incomes. If I work hard, because I have the brains, I am willing to work hard, I will get incomes, honestly. I will serve the community and therefore convert that into money. And I will be able to compete with anybody. And tomorrow, I can be the Narayan Muthi of the future. I can be the Nandan Nilakani of the future. I can be the Ajit Premji of the future. If I work hard enough, if I am innovative enough. That confidence must be given to every single young person. Women's safety. Every day, we open the newspapers. The agony we all feel when a five-year-old child is hurt, when a 30-year-old woman is insecure. When you go to the police station, you are ill-treated, humiliated. The victim is called the victimized. If it's not really about safety of women, it's also about the police reform and judicial reform. Unless the perpetrators of these heinous crimes are punished swiftly, and fairly in a due process, within a few weeks. Unless we build a system which is independent of political interference, which is competent and honest, which can be trusted by the citizens, which works for the people of this country, people of Karnataka, not for the politicians in power, we will not have safety, we will not have rule of law. And Lok Sattva stands for that. Safety of women, safety for children, and rule of law, and police reform, and judicial reform, to make sure that every single citizen of Karnataka feels that my government works for me. It's not only a government by the people, but it's the government that works for the people. And unless the police work for the people, not for those in power, unless the courts actually deliver justice, not merely give black and choose, unless the citizens really work as a community and protect each other, if there's somebody who's doing something wrong, Unless the rest of the people around stand up and say, look, this is wrong, we cannot have safety. And Lok Sattva Party stands for that. Particularly in urban Karnataka, in Bangalore city and urban areas, because in rural areas things are slightly better, but there the issue is one of rule of law. When there is oppression, when there is caste oppression, when there is oppression because of land ownership, oppression because of wealth or political power, the people who are victims are further victimized in rural India every day. Bangalore city is the example of the best and the worst of India. The best because there is rapid economic growth, incomes are rising, it is truly cosmopolitan, every language, every region, every religion, every caste has a place here. The worst because it represents highly centralized growth, drying up the rest of Karnataka. It represents massive migration of not the highly skilled and ambitious people, but the low skilled people because they don't have a chance to get a 3,000 rupees or 5,000 rupees income in their villages and towns. Everything is Bangalore. <coughs> Even cities like Mysore and Hubli Tharwar and uh, Belgaum and uh, Raichur and other places are drying up, let alone the smaller towns, let alone the villages. Unless we have second tier and third tier towns which give opportunity to everybody, which create jobs so that people don't have to migrate in large numbers to big cities and create big slums and lead lives of desperation. Where a 3,000 rupee income per month for hard work, you have to commute 10 or 15 kilometers each side, each way, morning and evening, and you live, maybe six, seven people live together in a small room, equal to a bathroom in terms of size. How they survive with that income, we don't know. This is inhuman. Unless second, third tier towns develop, unless 
development is decentralized unless opportunities are available everywhere, even as Bangalore grows as a high-tech city, as a symbol of economic growth and modernity in this country. Unless this happens together, this city will suffer and the rest of the state will suffer. And therefore, we stand for balanced growth and growth of small towns, growth of other cities as hubs of economic growth, opportunity everywhere. Look at Bangalore city, look at any town, any village. Power is so centralized that the smallest thing you want to do, you have to go to the MLA, the MP, the minister, often times the chief minister. In this day and age, unless the communities are empowered, unless the every ward, every municipal ward in Bangalore city, every village panchayat, and every ward in every municipality, Unless the state government devolves at least a thousand rupees per capita, a thousand rupees per capita to each community and ask them to take care of their own affairs, their local garbage disposal, their streets, their street lighting, their water supply, their sewerage. Unless the local issues are handled by the local people, you will not get justice. Lok Sattva Party in Karnataka stands for that kind of empowerment so the communities can take charge. So that the vast tax money that flows to the state government, at least a small part of it, a thousand rupees per capita means only about eight or nine percent of the tax money. The state of Karnataka is spending probably about fifteen thousand rupees per capita, at least. And if you take one thousand rupees and transfer it to the community at the village level, at what level? That is only six or seven percent. 92 rupees, 93 rupees still is in the state government in the Vidhan South. And unless this at least 7-8% money flows directly to the local community to improve the issues locally, we cannot really ensure satisfaction. Water supply, garbage disposal, sewerage, storm water drains, name it. Even in Bangalore city, they are in disrepair. Unless local people can take care of many things locally, we cannot improve. Take the water supply to the city of Bangalore. We were doing a quick calculation. Bangalore city has 741 square kilometers area according to the data that I have. You have 978 millimeters of rainfall, almost a thousand millimeters of rainfall. That means in every square meter of land, annually you get a thousand liters of rainfall. If you compute the numbers, you get at least about 500, and 500 million gallons of water per day by rainfall in Bangalore city. 500 million gallons of water per day. How much does the city government supply? About 300 million gallons per day. About 300 million gallons per day. And for that water, we are looking at Kaveri, you are looking at something else, we are saying where is the water, how do you get the water, water shortages. But Mother Nature is giving us 500 million gallons per day. What's happening to this water? It is choking up our trains and every time there is a rainfall, Bangalore drains up full. What's happened to the people in the households? There is no water. Can there be a worse mismanagement? Water harvesting in every part of the city and in every part of the state. Karnataka state is spending just about a thousand crores on Employment Guarantee Act. The expenditure has come down by 66% over the past 3-4 years. If that money is spent wisely, so let's say we spend 2,000 crores every year for water harvesting to ensure that every drop of water is utilized. It actually improves the groundwater. Then the local community's assets will improve, agriculture will improve, our towns and cities and villages will not be starved of water. Money is available. Employment Guarantee Act money is available for the rural areas. Urban areas we can find plenty of money because the community can be involved in private lands and government lands. We stand for proper water management in Bangalore city, every urban area, every village in all of Karnataka to benefit both the drinking water and the agricultural water, the irrigation. We have money, we just don't have the pay. Effective water management and effective amenities, delivery of services. Then the government services, Karnataka government has already taken some initiative. Looks at the party does not criticize for criticism, say. When they do something good, we appreciate that. Sakala is a good initiative. We welcome it. But we have to go much farther. It's not enough to limit them to a few services. It's not enough to simply give some kind of an assurance without 
adequate legal backing without penalties for non-performance. Therefore, Lok Sattva Party stands for Sakala's expansion to every single deliverable service in Karnataka state. And, and to give timelines, and for every day's delay, there shall be a compensation of 250 rupees a day for failure to deliver. And a penalty imposed on the public servant for failing to deliver. Because of Lok Sattva's initiative, Dr. Ashwin Mahesh and all our colleagues, including Tara and others, we all went to the parliamentary committee. We persuaded them. At their request, we actually drafted a law, an integrated law. Right now, a variant of that law is now before the parliament. Even if that law is not enacted for the states, we will ensure that with our legislative presence, we will get such a law enacted in Karnataka state and there will be delivery of services to guarantee. We will not have to go from pillar to post or bribe people or swallow our, our dissatisfaction and shed silent tears. We don't have to do that. Because we pay the taxes, we are entitled to services. Therefore, service guarantee is going to be an important issue on which looks at the party will fight and get it delivered. Lokayuta. Karnataka has a stronger Lokayuta than most states, but it's not strong enough. Lok Sattva has fought for a strong Lokayuta. If you remember, when Justice Santosh Shikhtar was a Lokayuta in the state. We will see that that strong Lokayuta is delivered because now, right now, while Lokayuta has empowered to investigate, its orders are not binding. It is a toothless tiger. We will give teeth by making Lokayuta's orders mandatory and enforce it. We will see that the law is enacted in a manner that the strong Lokayuta becomes actually effective in delivery. And corruption will be a thing of the past by ensuring that there will be confiscation of properties no matter how high you are because Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh today are epicenters of corruption. <laughs> today there is no fear that you are a paid public servant or a politician. Doesn't matter how many crores you make, at worst you may lose office, even that is not certain because they are confident that they will buy their way into office. See the way some people got elected after resigning in the last assembly, in the by-election, the kind of majorities they got despite monumental corruption. Unless properties are confiscated, unless local actor has team, unless the fellows are put away behind bars for years for their misdoings and wrongdoings, corruption will not end. Our talking and shouting is not enough. There must be penalty for corruption. There must be fear that if I do something wrong, if I'm caught, no matter how high I am, how rich I am, I will pay the price. And Lok Sattva will do everything possible to ensure that. Friends, let me end with electricity, a symbol of misgovernance in this state and in this country. More than 30% of power is wasted. There is no metering anywhere. There are power cuts in towns and cities and villages rarely get power at all. We talk of free power, but the farmers' power is so efficient in terms of the number of hours they get and also in terms of the quality of power that the motors get burned most of the time. They spend more money than they would have paid for the time. Loksat has taken the initiative to actually try on an experimental basis at local level to improve power. We have seen spectacular results. We have seen 18% power savings by better energy auditing and metering and by better management. 18% power saved, that means roughly about four to 5,000 crores money saved per year if you do it in all or not. 5,000 crores without, uh, without increasing the tariff by even one paisa is possible. We have done it at a micro level on an experimental basis. We have ensured that there is no power outage, unscheduled power outage, or there is no voltage fluctuation, no motor is burnt. We have ensured that there is no corruption whatsoever. We have ensured that in case a transformer gets burnt, instead of days it takes only hours to repair it, instead of thousands it takes only hundreds of rupees to set it right. All this is possible. And with that, you can guarantee 24 hour power to every village for non-agricultural purposes. Just because you are in a village, there is no need you should be denied power for non-agricultural purposes because unless power goes to villages, economy cannot grow. Civilization cannot reach the villages. That's entirely possible. Lok Sattva is totally committed to this. The problems of Karnataka are man-made. They're not because of nature. They're not because of God. They're entirely because of bad governance. 
lack of foresight, lack of understanding, and a callous, corrupt, totally self-serving political class. Lok Sattva Party is a genuine challenge of citizens, a government by the people, not a government of mercenaries using people's vote and making people suffer time and again. It is an effort to bring the people into the political process, the middle classes, the young people, the educated people, the farmers, the suffering people who are not getting their amenities, the taxpayers. It is about transforming politics, not merely blaming them. It's about finding solutions and be a part of the solution. One question may come. Look, you are only contesting in 29 seats. Even if you win in a significant number of these seats, you will still have only some presence in the legislature. How can you make a difference? Pity me. me. Never doubt, never doubt that the world can be changed by a group of thoughtful, committed individuals. All change throughout the world happened because a small group of thoughtful, committed individuals came together with a sense of purpose. If the sense of purpose is meaningful, if it's genuine, if it's rational, then the world changes. Even if we have, let us say, a dozen members of legislature elected from Bangalore city, a dozen out of 224 can transform the way the legislature functions by the quality of ideas, by the integrity and commitment, by the way they are elected to office, by the way they conduct themselves, by the way they articulate ideas, by the way they actually practice what they preach. That will change the way Karnataka functions. That will change the way, they, the way India functions. Never doubt that. When you are voting for these parties to office, after all they got a majority, certainly. What have they done? What has Congress done earlier? What has the BJP done in the past five years? Just because they got a majority, have they done something right for the country? For the state? Have they done something right? What is, what is looks like the party required? All of us who have good personal lives, who know how to enjoy our lives, we are now entering the fray not because we want to, we have the lust for power, not because we want to enjoy power and convert it into private gain, but because we are deeply dissatisfied. We are saying, enough is enough. This shall be changed now by us, not by somebody else. Because we cannot fight in 224 constituencies on one day. Because not enough people of quality are willing to come forward, put themselves forward as candidates and fight. It takes some time to be able to compete at that level. But now that in Bangalore we are ready, now that in some parts of Karnataka we are ready, if we are elected to office in those seats, we will make a difference to the constituencies we are elected from and we will make a difference to the state of Karnataka. I guarantee you that. Time and again, a few voices in the legislatures make significant difference. You go to Andhra Pradesh and ask anybody which legislator is making a difference. The Lok Sattva legislature is making a huge difference in terms of discourse and shaping the agenda for the state. You may not have numbers, but one person, one person with conviction is a majority. You have large numbers, they simply raise their hands when the party tells them to, without even knowing what is the issue. They don't know which law is being enacted why, they don't know which policy is being enunciated why, what kind of research is that? What are the numbers for? It's a loyal jibba, it's not really people's representation. Therefore, please do not doubt that a party which only has presence in some constituencies will not make an impact, it will make a huge impact. Then one last question. Look at the face of this kind of money power, this kind of muscle power, the kind of barrage of abuse that they unleash, the kind of vote buying they indulge in, the kind of caste and other kinds of separatism that they bring in, will ethical and rational politics have a chance to survive? Of course it must survive. Do you want the current, current corrupt and cynical and self-serving and totally anti-people politics to survive? How else can we challenge it? The only challenge is for the voters' hearts. We are all sick and tired of it. Voters need a platform they can trust. Here is a platform. All these candidates are not Johnny's come lately who suddenly said we want to become politicians. They are all people who spent a lifetime, a lifetime serving the public cause without expecting anything in return. They are all people who sacrificed, who not take anything from the community. Each of the looks at the candidates is a person who sacrificed for the community. Their time, their energy, their resources, their talent, their ability for the public good. 
What kind of politicians do you want? Politicians like Gandhi, Nehru, Ambedkar, Patel and Aza are politicians who make 5 crores, 10 crores, 20 crores, 100 crores actually I am talking of small numbers. It will be an insult to many legislators and ministers in Karnataka if I say they make 10 crores. And because political office is politics, 75 percent of them will be totally unfit to hold any kind of office anywhere in the country and the world. They cannot earn a decent livelihood on their own. Is that the kind of people you want? Of course, Lok Sabha Party must be elected. It will be elected if simply the voters who are sick and tired of what's happening, who want better politics and a better society for their children, vote according to their beliefs. And Bangalore and Karnataka are the best places today because the vote of the opposition is fragmented. All parties which are traditional have completely lost credibility. Whom do you trust? The Europa? Whom do you trust? The Evagoda and the Sons? Whom do you trust? The Congress party with this monumental failure and complete lack of leadership and phenomenal corruption at the national level and local level? Whom do you trust? The BJP in Karnataka with a kind of shenanigans over the past five years? How can you vote for them? If you really are a citizen who cares for your own children and their future. If you really want your tax money to be properly utilized. If we have dignity. If we have integrity. If we really have a sense of the future. How can we in good conscience vote for these four parties? Pray them. On what basis? Here is a new fresh platform of men and women of caliber and integrity and proven record of service and sacrifice. They are bringing politics and the freedom struggle back to the center stage. If we really mean business, if our anger is genuine, if we are real about transforming India, if we love our children, it's not enough that we safeguard them in our homes, we must safeguard them in our streets, we must ensure a better community. And that means only one party looks at the party, only one symbol, the vision is symbol. The vision is a symbol of awareness and awakening. The vision is a symbol of people saying enough is enough. We now stand up and shout from two tops. Show sure, Macha. The vision is a symbol of people's assertion. And that's why Lok Sattva Party has chosen the symbol of vision. And the ground, ground reality is a changing happening. Today, the illegal holdings are disappearing. Therefore, the people who use their muscle power and their influence to get an advantage, slowly that's becoming a thing of the past. In Bangalore city at least, vote buying is not going to be easy because the majority of voters are enlightened. You cannot divide people of Bangalore city, a cosmopolitan city, on caste and religion and region. They understand their enlightened self-interest collectively. And the election commission is now taking the steps to give the slips to each household so that the candidates and the parties don't have to actually go to the households and case slips. They are doing at least something, not enough, to be able to curb the illegal money power. At least in cities, at least in some places where the people are more awake and more enlightened, we can actually change the way politics is shaping up. And the center of gravity of politics must shift to urban areas and cities, must shift to the middle class and the youth must give to the educated people and the enlightened people. Otherwise, India will far away be a backward, backward looking, poor country. Our aspiration is to build a modern society, a great society. A society in which everybody has an opportunity. A society in which incomes rise, in which poverty is a thing of the past. If that's the case, you cannot have a 21st century economy like Bangalore is showing, and 19th century politics as Karnataka is showing. We must bring Karnataka politics on par with Bangalore economy. That is the agenda of Lok Sattva Party and Vizil is the symbol and Lok Sattva is the party. And so this message will go loud and clear wherever Lok Sattva candidates are contesting. And our candidates, I'm sure, will work very hard to reach every single citizen with faith in the hearts and love. And love. Politics is about love. It's about compassion. It's about empathy. Politics is not really about wars. Unless you love people, unless you have empathy, unless you have compassion, politics is meaningless. It's about transforming the lives of the voters, lives of these families, lives of the community. We are part of the community. We are not some foreign interlopers. 
We are not people who made abnormal money illegitimately and therefore are not affected by what happens around us. We are part of the people of Bangalore and Karnataka. We are part of this society. We pay the price along with others if things go wrong. We gain along with others if things go well. And that's why we deserve these people's vote. And that's why we will serve them with humility as part of the people because we are a government by the people. I wish you all the very best. I'm proud of all of you. Fight hard, win, and after winning, and after getting the people's vote, you prove to the people that, yes, we make a difference. Yes, we help transform the state of Karnataka and the politics of India. I wish you all the very best. Thank you.